Welcome to another edition of Anglican Unscripted, the Father Argo edition. I'm Kevin Coulson. And I'm Father Argo. It's 120 degrees, and it's July 15th, 2017. I'd like to welcome Father Argo back to the program. We haven't talked to you in about a year now, and uh, you're no longer working uh, where you were before, which we'll keep private, but you're working somewhere new uh, on the front lines in Iraq. Um, how did this opportunity come about? I hope it was a God thing. We, uh, when it was August 8, 2014, uh, mm. the, that was the date that uh, ISIS declared the caliphate. And uh, on that day, we were um, in worship and just got a word of the Lord to go to Iraq now. Hmm. And we didn't know anybody and didn't know the language, had no contacts. We were just going to fly in and walk to a camp or walk somewhere. And um, yeah, we're here now. <laughs> we, uh, we followed that word and uh, we were able to uh, uh, work with our local people where we were before. They're doing great. And we were released. And so we are... Uh, here up in northern Iraq on the on the front lines. On the front lines, it's uh, a little warm there this time of year. What? Tell me a little bit about the temperature issues you're having. It's great. We have a cool front in. Uh, it's about 120, so we're we're doing a lot better. Um, my my wife calls it a, a not so stinking hot front, and uh, yeah, I can definitely break 130, 135. Um, uh, it's very hot in Mosul. Uh, right now where I just was and uh, certainly no air conditioning there uh, so it's summer uh, summer in the Middle East uh, we should also update people as to your health you are not sitting at a desk uh, just looking at your laptop you're lying against a pillow what happened it's great I uh, managed to survive uh, being at the front in Mosul uh, in a combat zone and um, you know, got through that. It was great. And then uh, came back up to where we live in the far north and fell down a flight of marble stairs. So uh, a pretty interesting back injury and we'll um, have to get that looked at. So I'm uh, fairly stationary right now. Wow. Well, that helps for me. I'll make editing a little easier. Um, <laughs> it helps a lot. So yeah, this is probably, this was all for you. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Let's talk a little bit about uh, life on the ground in Mosul. Um, the uh, forces here in America and politicians have claimed victory in Mosul. We finally kicked out ISIS. The caliphate will soon be over. La da 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 da. But the reality on the ground in Mosul is if you don't completely eradicate ISIS 100%, the, the remaining, remaining 1% will cause damage for, you know, Ever. Really, the, the, the sense here is that actually you can vaporize ISIS, nothing will change. Mm -hmm. It's the mentality, uh, of, particularly of the, the Sunni Muslims in the, uh, the Mosul area. Uh, it's you know, like this is Nineveh. They have been difficult for a very long time. Absolutely. Uh, yes. From, you know, Assyrian to, you know, Christian for a while, and now they're, you know, Muslim. Uh, they're di they're difficult, but uh, it's a it's a absolute stronghold for um, you know very radical Islam, and ISIS is just the latest manifestation of that. Uh, a matter of fact, one of the big Sunni imams in Mosul said, um, "We're just going to bring back the the Islamic State, but we'll be smarter next time. Um, so we'll be sort of more inclusive. Maybe you know leave out some of the genocide, you know." But it proceeded a different pace. But th that's a it's a it's an absolute feeling here, hundred percent, that nothing is going to change with or without ISIS. There, it will it will just continue being played. Not so what? What's the refugee status now of uh, Christians, um, uh, former uh, ISIS refugees, uh, current uh, ISIS uh, sympathizers? We sort of had two major uh, fronts right now. We have the um, original ISIS um, refugees from 2014, but 
you have to understand here the, the you know 2004, 5, 6 were very bad years when Al Qaeda was um, at full throttle here, and that created a lot of IDPs, you know, in, in the in the country. So it goes back that far. Well, we have the, you're using an acronym. We should probably have mercy on the Anglican unscripted okay. crowd. A, a refugee is someone who comes from a uh, different country. So the right. Syrians here in Iraq are are true refugees. People within their own country who have been displaced are called internally displaced persons. We have right. a lot more of them. Mm -hmm. So we have about 2 million of those here in the far north, IDPs, uh, from 2014. And about 700,000 are in UN camps. And uh, the, the big story there is just, you know, the UN is um, rather unhelpful on many levels. And the nonprofits have completely pulled out. I mm -hmm. just met with a director of all 27 camps who just said, we are so desperate, please get the word out that the, the nonprofits and foreign governments have just pulled out and we're sitting here stuck with 700,000 people in camps. And it's a very bad situation for them. And then don't forget us, you know, the attentions on Mosul, uh, the, the, the people from Mosul are being put into camps now. Uh, I watched it happen. Uh, live time, uh, they would, uh, we were right near the front, uh, trucks would go up and, and if people, they wouldn't go looking for them, if they could get out of the fire and get out of the immediate fire zone to a truck, they would take them to a triage center, throw them in another truck, and then take them to uh, the camps. These are detention camps, so they can't leave. The 27 camps up here in the north, you know, you can come and go, you're not a prisoner, they can work, they can do whatever they want to do. These camps for the Mosul citizens are completely off limits. They are detention camps because they know they are there are ISIS um, in the camps themselves, and many of the people there are, are ISIS sympathizers. That's just the reality of Mosul. They they chose to be here. <laughs> um, uh, whether they liked how it turned out, that's a different question. But they definitely chose to be under ISIS. Many of them. And so they're in these detention camps, and they're huge. These, you can't get to them. We saw them driving in the Mosul. They're massive. So we're talking hundreds of thousands of people uh, in, in camps that are uh, in the Nineveh Plains outside Mosul right now. So we have two crises going on at the same time. All right. Uh, viewers, how can they help with that crisis? One is pray, and because we've said this from day one, you know, the only, the only solution to the whole situation here is the gospel. Mm -hmm. there's, there's no political s solution to dealing with Islam. There's no diplomatic solution. Uh, the Sunni and the Shia are going to fight till Jesus comes. Uh, and that's what we're going to see next in Mosul. We're, we're going to see a sectarian war, and then we could see a, we're going to have a regional war, and we could possibly have other countries involved. That's the way this is evolving. It doesn't look good. Um, and then, so uh, we just got to pray because at the same time, we have the largest, the biggest move of God in the history of the Islamic world is happening right now. Um, it's particularly happening with the Syrian refugees all over the region. Uh, their God is just making a move on the Syrians right now. And so pray in that move. Uh, we need to pray for laborers for the harvest. And uh, uh, so that's, those are big prayer points for us on a practical point of view. Uh, you know, if people want to help, um, $30 a month gets a family through the whole month. I mean, they mm -hmm. only get, right now, they're getting $11 a month food voucher from the UN, which is not, it's not $11. It's not enough. It's stinking hot right now. And then we're going to go to freezing cold. We're going to be back to needing blankets and heaters. But $30 will foods will provide supplement for a whole refugee family or IDP family for a month. Um, and I'm sure you'll, you can put our website up there. Later. Sure. Love to. That would be good. Um, last week you posted video of an attack in, in Mosul. Um, that's the new reality uh, for a country that's been a war for thousands of years. Um, I say new reality because we get to film it with a, yeah. a missionary with his camera. Um, Tell me about the secured, you know, the life of the average person in Mosul right now. 
the the there's two distinct sides of the Tigris. So the the uh, east side, which they call the left side, is um, uh, you know not an active combat zone, but uh, you know, what you have there are snipers and um, uh, suicide bombers. It was very interesting, Kevin. We were, we were at the gates of the University of Mosul, and about, I'd say, 80% of the, the, the university has been destroyed. Mm -hmm. uh, ISIS was using it for its purposes and uh, a lot of airstrikes. They were running, actually, their whole military command post was at the dental school at one point, so that no longer exists. But, you know, it was amazing. And so we're standing there at the gates, and there's a huge, there was a huge suicide bomb right back in, near the university. And 80% of it's in rubble, and students are going to class. They're meeting, and they have their textbooks and notebooks, and they look like regular sort of college students. It's, um, it's, it's bizarre, uh, you, you know, with this backdrop. And I felt more unsafe there than I did 100. We're about, we were about 100 meters from the act of fighting. Um, it was more unsafe there because, you know, snipers can just pop up, suicide bombers pop up, and we were told by the military it's more, in a sense, more dangerous there because there's no front line. Everybody's, you know, a target of opportunity. Mm -hmm. uh, so you've got that going on. What, you know, blew my mind, though, was driving through this city the size of Houston, Texas, about four million people. Um, it is absolutely devastated. It's like what I Hurricane Katrina, but with a war on top of it. It's, it's all rubble. All, all the pictures we see here back in America is rubble, uh, body parts and rubble. It is. It's just unbelievable to drive through mm -hmm. this city so utterly destroyed. And really, the question is: uh, so they're just um, what's happening now is uh, like we just. I talked to a friend who's right there on the front. Told me that. You know, a girl showed up at the trauma center. Her whole family were ISIS supporters and blew themselves up. She managed mm -hmm. to escape. Uh, some, uh, we have thousands of Yazidis still missing. Some of their slaves are starting to emerge from the rubble uh, a little bit. So you've got all that going on. But the, the question also is, what's going to happen? Who's going to rebuild Mosul? Uh, you know, uh, Baghdad is Shia. They're not going to be in a great mood for that. No, nope, um, they don't want to. They, 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 they have no prerogative to put money uh, back the, up in Sunnis. Yeah, the Sunni, there, there would be some potential Sunni partners in the region, but Baghdad's not going to let that happen. So, you know, I mean, you've displaced the city the size of Houston, Texas, and this whole region. And, um, you know, and but also you have to get, one thing struck me on driving in was there's a, to get to Mosul once you're really in Iraq is there's about four hours of checkpoints in and out. So you drive eight hours of checkpoints and it's Sunni militia, Shia militia, Sunni militia, Shia, Shia militia, Hezbollah. They're going to fight. They are, they are absolutely going to fight. The, the, there's already sort of Shia payback going on the Sunnis right now, which is going to then uh, reactivate the Sunni militias. Um, I will say just Anecdotally, the Shia militias were the nicest of the group. Who knows why? The Sunni militias and the Iraqi army. I was really struck by how much they hate Americans. They mm -hmm. hate um, the Iraqi regulars. Hate America. Hate Americans. Uh, I was very just sort of struck by that. It was interesting. Um, but there, the next big thing then after this is going to be uh, the Shia militias are probably going to go after the Kurds after the Peshmerga. So we could see a regional war here. Uh, you know, it's it, that's definitely brutal. Uh, so a lot of stability. yeah. I mean, the one thing we have done is added a lot of armament to the area, more arms, no more war machines, and uh, as we saw with ISIS, they're easy to capture, take, and use. Um, so, what are the the good ministries there for? Uh, bringing Christianity to uh, this war zone? We are, we are seeing this move of God right now, and, and move, movements really have to be done by, ultimately, they have to be led by locals. Mm -hmm. And so the, the outsider, we come along as, um, we come alongside uh, the leaders here, and what we offer basically are, we can help them with simple resources, problem solving and a lot of prayer 
Um, and it just, I keep going back to that. We need the church in the West to pray right now. For the, I've met with some secret uh, leaders of secret groups in a very uh, Islamic part of this country. Met them this morning. They're doing amazing. Um, and I, I've met with uh, some leaders a couple of weeks ago. God, I wish I could give you more detail. Just no, no, believe, that's fine. believe, yeah. believe, believe. There, there is unbelievable stuff happening here right now. But um, with with the Muslims, with the Kurds, but the uh, and the Yazidi a bit. Uh, the one thing though is they feel very alone. The secret believers. I was talking to them about that, and they uh, they they really would they yearn to be connected to the greater body. So we just need to know they're praying with us. We need to know we have a family, uh, you know, that cares about us. So that's an important thing, just to let them know our friends back home. Uh, on um, Anglican TV and uh, that are praying for them. I tell them that every time, that, that we do care about them, we're family, that's really important. But, you know, they have to do this themselves. It has to be locally led. Um, so they're, they're, they're finding their way right now. It is happening. Uh, what we can pray for is boldness. And for them, uh, we don't pray for protection. Uh, we pray for just the movement to move, for local leaders to emerge. Um, again, where Westerners can help is with the Gospel Bridge. We find that um, Mercy Ministries Relief really opens uh, opens hearts uh, for them, and, it's, and we're very strategic about it. But just to uh, you know, bring them a little food. We always can pray with them. Doing medical clinics here, with, it, it opens, it lets them see the love of Jesus. It lets them see it, um, and it opens their eyes. So there's there's. The West pray, give, advocate, uh, the Wilberforce model. We just keep saying it, you know, pray for this move of God, uh, give uh, smart, with wisely, and uh, advocate for them. Like, uh, you know, let them share what's going on and get people involved. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I'm going to let you get back to your heat. My apologies. <laughs> and uh, we're going to get this video up on the internet as soon as possible. Um, do keep Father Argo in your prayers. Um, many of you know who he is, and uh, I do hope you could contact him directly to encourage him in his ministries and his wife and family. Uh, thank you again, Father, for, for your work. God bless you all. Just keep the prayers coming. We are um, we are steadfast viewers here in the Middle East, so uh, we, uh, we receive from you too. We enjoy watching and connected through you. We appreciate that. I am surprised uh, by how good your internet connection really is. Uh, yeah, I, I can call England and it's just barely buffers and uh, we've had nothing but clear contact with Mosul here. But I don't have, I don't have AC. The yes. AC's out. So, <laughs> but I, have it, I would rather have the AC than be talking to you.